led you to BJJ? Um, and then ultimately, if we could just talk through the journey to what led, you know, you got a, you're a world champion. Um, and I understand. Uh, anyway, so let's, let's just, let me learn a lot more about that, I guess. Yeah. And I think too, I think that it correlates with the writing. Um, I love that. I think I'm reading uh, Miyamoto Musashi right now. And mm -hmm. he talks about the way of the sword and the way of the pen. And it's like, it's basically the same thing. But um, in jujitsu, I, so I wrestled and I finished wrestling and I did a, I went to a gym. Like I knew this guy. So like my, technically my junior year of high school, I did one jujitsu private. Wow. With this guy, it was like, like it was 30 minutes striking, 30 minutes jujitsu. Okay. And we did 30, it was, you know, the great car. It was like, wow, this cardio is great. And then we did jujitsu and I got tapped out like 15 times. And I was like, damn, I'm really bad at this. And then we, um, you know, I went back to wrestling, never saw this guy again for a year. Then mm -hmm. wrestling finished in February and I was like, well, I need to do something else now. Otherwise I'm going to get really fat because I like mm -hmm. to eat mm -hmm. and I'm not working out every day anymore. So I literally just mm -hmm. went to the gym that I went to just for class this time. Mm -hmm. And um, I never really stopped. You know, I didn't start training hard for about a year. Okay. But I was in the gym like, as a senior in high school. So now, was this gi or no gi? This was a gi class. This was a okay. Class. So you did start in the gi, transitioning from a wrestler. Wow. Okay. Yes. And as but a high we, I school. didn't. I was. I did not like the gi for a long time. Okay. <laughs> sure. I understand. But then I the ultimately, being very upset. Oh yeah. Well, it's so um. Well, it's just it's very. Li it can be very limiting, and you can just be so exposed in so many ways. I feel like. Yeah. And when you when you're the unknown, it's just exponentially larger <laughs> than than no gi. I feel like. Yeah. Um, well, but, originally uh, when I started, I wanted to do MMA. Oh, that okay. was like the original goal. Like I remember, mm -hmm. so I walked into the gym, and there was this dude training who was a kickboxer, and the instructor was like, "Yeah, this is Chris. He used to wrestle." Blah 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 blah. And the instructor's like, oh, so we're going to see you in the UFC one day. And I didn't know he was joking. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to the UFC. <laughs> I love it. And awesome. That's, I never, I haven't fought MMA, but yeah, that made me like want to train hard. It inspired all of us. It, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And especially like then I started watching the UFC and I was like, there were so many guys in the UFC who like, they're like, this guy just wrestled in high school. Right. And I was like, well, I just wrestled like, you know, right. It, it, felt, it, it didn't like feel normal. out of reach. Yeah. Yeah. Especially like in, in 2021 or, or at that age too. It's like, I can do yeah, that. 17. Oh yeah. 17 for sure. You're like, yeah, you're so malleable as a human. Like you may have never broken a bone. Like, like yeah. you're just so strong, you know? Yeah. Well, I think that we tell kids like in high school, we're like, Oh, once your athletic career in high school is done, you're mm -hmm. done. Unless yeah. you go play like, college sports that is like that's not true i agree i agree i so much agree to that and and it, it, we almost live yeah we do limit ourselves in that way because it's like well unless you want to go college or pro and go that track or if you want to go olympic track yeah you can club sport maybe and it's like and you have to seek those things those those things kind of actively um or fraternity up or something in college like you yeah. gotta find these things uh so yeah i agree it's like um, and, and I think certain sports have kind of found ways to transcend that. You, I mean, people who have a passion for like soccer, like you'll see them out on a Sunday on almost any given yeah. field and stuff. But uh, it is hard to do that with like, if you want to wrestle or something, it's like after high school. Yeah, man, if you don't, you know, anyway, so yeah, I, I absolutely understand. That. Can you detail a little bit more about, you know, the road? Um, I mean, because no one can really know the sacrifices you made other than you to becoming like an IBJJF world champion. There, there's so much to that. And, and that was no gi, right? Mm. Yeah. So, so totally different than, than you started off focusing gi, right. And then transition. Well, and so I was really lucky. So I started training in Evanston at this gym. It was called the fitness matrix. Okay. And there was this guy teaching Albert. He was at a Brown belt. And he was the guy who taught my first geek class. And there were like four students in the class. And then mm -hmm. about two months into my, 
training. No, no, three months into my training, it was July. So I started in early April, like April 1st. Mm -hmm. And then July came around and he was going to merge the gym because Jeff Serafin was in downtown Evanston and he had to move locations because his building was getting torn down. Mm. So he merged with Albert and Mm. they all, they made this huge gym, you know, this gym in the fitness matrix that became Serafin Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Mm. So I was away at, uh, cause I went to school in Oregon for a year. Oh. And so I was at my orientation in Oregon and I came back and all of a sudden it was like, the gym was huge. And there was like, Jeff was the first black belt I ever saw. And I was mm-hmm. like, wow, there's a black belt. And you know, Jeff wow. was also a pro MMA fighter. And yeah. The man. Yeah. He has, you know, it's Kim Morris. Yeah. He has, like, <laughs> he's like, he's been doing jiu-jitsu for about as long as I've been alive, which is wow. just crazy to me. Mm-hmm. And he's not that much older than me. He's like 36. Yeah, I feel like he's my age. I'm 37. <laughs> yeah. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah. But um, so I started training with Jeff and then I went to Oregon and I trained in the jiu-jitsu club, which was like, yeah. you know, just a bunch of kids. And we had like blue belt instructors and oh, wow. we just kind of messing around. And mm-hmm. then I did that for a semester. And then I joined, I went back to Oregon because I did Oregon for a year. So then I trained for a year there and I competed like my first couple tournaments like Naga Mm -hmm. and they had some local tournaments there that I did. And I was training at this small gym and I ended up getting my blue belt at the end of the year, Um, Mm. which I I wasn't really a blue belt. Like I had like five months of formal training, you know, because I had been bouncing around so much, but I've been doing jiu-jitsu for about a year. I had like five months of like training with an instructor every day. Right. Uh, Cause a lot of time in the club was just messing around, like me being a good wrestler and showing takedowns and stuff like that. Sure. Sure. So then I came home for a summer vacation at home and I trained with Jeff over the summer. And that was like when I really got into jujitsu. That was when mm. I like got into jujitsu, jujitsu. And mm. I wanted to be good at competing in jujitsu. Did, did he inspire directly kind of inspire that or is that um, what ignited the, your personal love for it? I think so. I think that it was partially him and it was partially, it was just, I liked the, cause there was a Chicago open coming up. Mm-hmm. And so I like the way he kind of hyped up the Chicago open in a way that made me really excited about it. Sure. And I train my butt off yeah. for the whole summer, cool. like every day, every, you know, twice, I think twice a day. It was, I was mm-hmm. training a lot back then. Mm-hmm. And then um, Oregon didn't work out. It was, that's a whole long story in itself. But I ended up going to Nogi Worlds at the end of my next semester in Oregon. And I went mm-hmm. back for the fall and I took, I took third at Nogi Worlds on my first mm-hmm. Nogi World. I barely knew the rules. Amazing. but it was like <laughs> that's amazing. That, that was what hooked me for sure like i was like oh, I had to. yeah i took third and i don't know the rules i can be good at this yeah your potential yeah amazing so after that it was pretty much all it mm-hmm. so then i moved home um after and i started going to, i went to community college for a semester and then i trained at jeff's pretty much full time then i transferred to Loyola and i was training at jeff's and then it was yeah, jiu jitsu is a long story, but there was also sure, there sure. was a knee surgery in there at some point. Mm. There was um, I trained at Jay's for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there was a while where I was going to tra- Jay's and Jeff's, and it was mm-hmm. like yeah, you know, they were super nice. They were super understanding of this like great you know, guys, crazy twenty one year old kid who just wants to train at every gym. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you know I was I did all the major tournaments like pans worlds nogi worlds and i was nogi worlds i was always on the podium and then for some reason 2019 it just all came together and i had a very good very good tournament and Mm -hmm. that was how it won Mm -hmm. and that was like the culmination of a very long year i think i did 55 matches that year yeah Uh, i'm glad you you